Hypothesis testing determines whether the treatment effect is greater than chance, but as we learned in Chapter 8, the test doesn't give us any information about the magnitude of the treatment effect, and it is possible that a very small treatment effect can be statistically significant. Thus, we accompany statistically significant hypothesis tests with measures of effect size. You have already learned how to compute Cohen's D, and in this chapter, you will also learn how to calculate an R-squared measure of effect size. The formula is shown on the slide. Also, just as we use a table that provided criteria against which to evaluate the results of the Cohen's D test, we likewise have such a table for R-squared. This table is shown as Table 9.3 on page 264 in your book and provides criteria for interpreting the value of R-squared as proposed by Cohen in 1988. Cohen's D and calculating R-squared allows a researcher to calculate the magnitude of the treatment effect and to get a sense of the practical significance of the test. Another key point to make about measures of effect size is that they are not influenced by sample size. Specifically, sample size, or N, is not a, Cohen, a component of the Cohen's D formula, and while degrees of freedom is included in the R-squared formula, its relation with sample size has a minimal impact on the R-squared value generated. When Cohen developed these formulas, he was aware that if you have a very large sample size, you have a higher probability of computing a significant test statistic just because of the sample size. A measure of effect size allows the treatment effect to be quantified irrespective of the size of the sample. Finally, an important thing to note in the R-squared formula is that the t-value that is shown in the formula is the t-value that you compute using the t-test, not the t-value found in the t-table.